a little bit sooner. Hopefully there's no noise. Um, I'm Marko Strukel and I work uh, for Red Hat. Uh, I work on the Keycloak project. How many of you have used Keycloak? Okay, a few of you. Good to see. Um, so Keycloak is a single sign-on server and um, in this session I'll um, try to show how easy it is to use it instead of doing some kind of some kind of homegrown solution. Um, so let's get started. Like number one thing, every day you see an exploit, uh, stolen data, um, it happens continuously, and security is a really tricky thing. Even if you think you understand it, there are little details uh, that once you learn about them, it's like, wow, and you, you can't believe it. that. Uh, through that eye of the needle, uh, the system can be exploited. So it's really not a particularly good idea if you have available solutions to do this yourself. And um, what Keycloak does for you is it provides a server and it provides a login form so that this server does. It uses the um, latest, greatest technologies. Um, you have these web protocols like OpenID Connect. Um, you have support for things like SAML to integrate with your backends. Uh, the whole security is based on tokens. So it's the same thing that uh, Google uses or Facebook uses for uh, this login as a Google user. And then any kind of application can use that. And so one of the things that uh, we provide is a login form. And a typical way to install Keycloak is you install Keycloak on one machine, and then you have your application somewhere else. You have multiple applications all around the place, and you can have the same set of users that can log in once and then use all these applications. And so one of the things that Keycloak provides is a login form. So the idea is that you don't have a login form in your application, but you do a redirect. When it's time for user to authenticate, there is a redirect, user is redirected to the Keycloak server, and it sees this login form, which is customizable. We use themes. We say, don't write your own thing and use like REST underneath. Don't do that. Use our forms. Our forms are themable, very customizable. This is the default that you get from Keycloak. You can do your own. It's, it's very simple to theme. This is what Red Hat uses for their developer site. It's Keycloak underneath. It's customized to look, to blending completely. The only thing that gives it away is uh, a URL where you see that, oh, this looks familiar. So one of the things that Keycloak gives you is administration console. Oh, uh, you go to this slash alt slash admin. You log in as admin or some admin capable user, and this is what you get. Uh, you get a whole bunch of settings to configure. Um, the most important concept, maybe, or, or you start with the concept. Uh, in Kiko, it's called Realm. Here we are in a, re in a master realm. And Realm is simply like a one set of configuration. Uh, this is for multi-tenancy, so that you can support very different kind of projects that have multiple realms. So mas master realm is available to you by default. But then you can go in, in the config, uh, in the menu, and you say create a new realm, and you just type the name of your realm, you have a new realm. And now you can switch to a new realm, you're in a new realm. And uh, all the configuration now that we do only touches this realm. So it's completely independent of master. We could do another realm, it would be again completely independent. Now, the login form that we saw, we only saw username, password, and login button. But there are options. You can just, with a click of a finger, you can activate certain uh, visual workflows that take care of uh, like user self-registration or um, forgot password. Or um, you can activate cookie to remember you and stuff like that. Uh, you can also turn on uh, internationalization. Um, you just select a bunch of languages that you want to support. The one that's listed. Uh, here as default locale will be used by default. And so 
Very simple. A few clicks, and you can have a chooser for language. Uh, here we have it in German now. Choose a language to log in. Now, out of the box, what you get is a self-service application that allows you to use a user. You can be, in, you can be logged in in any app uh, you want. And if this app provides you a URL once you're logged in, it's like going to Facebook to change your password. This is how it looks currently. We're not particularly pleased with the design. Um, we will eventually improve this. So here you can add additional information, for example, about your account if you don't have it. You can self-configure a um, two-step authentication for yourself uh, using OTP calculator. You just do this as a user. I mean. Now, once you create a new realm, of course, it will have no users. And so here I have a demo realm. Uh, I just created. I tried to log in as admin, and it doesn't work. There is no admin user here. So back in the admin console, I go under users. Uh, currently, we see there are no users. So I say create a new user. I get a form. Uh, I say, OK, this is a test user. Um, I also play here with some required actions. I say, OK, this user needs to update a password. Um, by default, user has no password. So if I just create a user, this user will not be able to log in. So as an administrator, I at least go um, under credentials and set this user a temporary password. So I type in password, click reset password, confirm. And I'll create the temporary password for user. Now the user logs into or tries to log into this demo. It has to update a password. So all these workflows, so all these forms are taken care of. So you don't have to do this yourself. Now user can, I mentioned already, self-registration or forgotten password. You have this login section in the configuration. You just turn on user registration button or forgot password button. Next time user comes to the login page, there are additional two links in there. Forgot password. New user, register. And the whole workflow is done for you. You can customize this to some extent. Uh, theming is the most uh, typical way you do. You can add, add some uh, fields and stuff like that. Uh, it's very trivial to add uh, login with Google or Facebook account, for example. You have uh, under Identity Providers menu, you just create Add New Identity Providers. You have a list of possibilities. In here, for example, I select Facebook. All you enter is the, you have to go to the Facebook uh, application developer web page. Then you have to configure an application for your thing, actually a client. And Facebook will give you a client ID, client secret. You copy this in. Just two information, two pieces of data. Now we see here we have created Facebook. Next time user comes to the page, he has a button Facebook. Just clicks it and goes through the, it's redirected to Facebook and goes through the whole process of approving the application and then it's logged in. That's it. And now I have a little demo um, and the same as uh, Marco before me. I have it pre-recorded, so there is no problems. So this is how Keycloak Server looks like uh, the first time you get there. And the first thing, it has no admin password by default. So here I have Keycloak Server on port uh, 8, uh, 8,180. And so I created an admin password. Now I logged in as admin into the console. And now I'll, I'll create a new demo realm. And um, now here, I well, what I'll have here is I will use the Keycloak quick starts, which are available on GitHub. And I will uh, open two of the quick starts that are supposed to work together. It's a typical situation where what you have is a REST service on one side, and then you have a web application, which is a static HTML5 application. Um, 
basically it's static HTML and JavaScript files, and um, it uses REST to communicate with the server. Um, so here what's going on is I'm simply installing a, a separate Wildfly container where my application will be deployed. So I have two servers. I have Keycloak as one server, and then I have another Wildfly uh, as another server for applications. And I just unzipped the adapter, which is something, Keycloak comes with certain modules and certain configurations that you just pop into your container, whatever it is. We support many different containers. And uh, for Wildfly, you just unzip a, uh, one file, and then you use JBoss CLI, a command line tool from Wildfly, to install the adapter into the server itself. So what this thing does effectively is it changes standalone XML. There are a few configurations in there, not, not a lot. You could do this manually, just editing standalone XML, but it's much more convenient to just run a script. And so the quick starts that, um, that I'll use are you just uh, clone the project uh, from GitHub, and then you have this directory structure. And I've opened two of these. So this service, JEE, JAFSRS, represents the REST service. And um, it has a very simple structure. Um, it uses JAFSRS, obviously. So this is Java EE stuff. Um, you can, it, it's a very simple thing. You just define application to bind to the root. Uh, you have one data object called message. And then you have three endpoints public, secured, and admin. And they are accessible in a different way depending on what, you, what role you have. Once you authenticate, you either can authenticate or you don't authenticate or don't authenticate. And uh, if you do authenticate, you have certain roles. And all these situations are covered. Um, and so this is your standard web XML descriptor, where what we do, we, we uh, define these both roles. In our case, we have a user role and an admin role. And then we constrain a certain endpoint, so a certain URL, to a specific role. And the important thing we do here, so that Keycloak will be used, will kick in, will trigger, is authentication method, which is usually something like form or basic, here we set it to Keycloak. And then the adapter that we just installed uh, will, in this case, will kick in. So we'll be there as a filter. It will intercept this, and we'll do the magic that all the redirects will just automatically happen. So here, we can just try to build this to create AOR. And uh, the build fails, uh, because these quick starts are created in such a way that you need to do something every time. So in this case, you need to configure the client for your application, and then you need to use that configuration, and you need to create a new file in here. So here we have two files. One represents a client description in the server, which we are now manually configuring here. So I go under clients, and I see all the clients that are available in demo realm. And I'll create a new one. I call it service minus JXRS. And very important thing, I change its access type to bear only. This is required when you're trying to do protect the REST services. What this means is that if user hits the web service and is redirected, actually is not redirected, uh, which otherwise it would be. Now, another thing, I have here is I can simply download this script. So I create a Keycloak JSON file. I copy paste what I got in the console. Uh, it's, it's virtually the same configuration as come with the quick start by default. And this time everything goes for nicely. And I do another step. This one I do from the shell. I use a Wildfly deploy Maven plugin and if I have an application server running, this will just deploy the archive straight to the server. And in this case, I do have it running in another label, another tab here. Um, 
And we can see it deployed something called service.var, which is our REST endpoint. And we can go in the browser now. And this service listens in here in slash service under our local host. And we saw that it responded with some JSON. And we can also try these different endpoints. We tried public. Public is always available. But if we try secured, we should get unauthorized because we, we were not redirected to any login form. This is, what, this is uh, the result of bearer-only authentication. We are not redirected. We simply get unauthorized. And now we have a different application. I mentioned this is a static HTML5 JavaScript application. And what we do, uh, what we have here is uh, we have index HTML, which uh, uses a JavaScript object called keycloak. Actually, we first um, import the script. And then uh, on this object, when user clicks login, we call login. When user clicks logout, we call logout. So it's like a library for um, HTML. We also have to write a little of our application code, application logic. So here, this is, this is essentially what you do in your own app. So this is not a library. This is the actual coding of your app. And here, you call a REST service. You use a token that is actually taken care of by local Keycloak adapter. This is the Keycloak.js file that we're using here. This file you don't touch. This file is you just copy paste it and uh, include it into your app. This is your library. And so let's try to install this. We'll just package this into a war and deploy it to Wildfly. And again, we have the same problem. Uh, this build is done in such a way that we need to put keycloak.json under config. We have some example configuration. This one. The type of this client is a bit different. This one is not bearer only. This one will be a so-called public client. Public because we do not require it to authenticate against Keycloak. Now, client itself can authenticate or can be required to authenticate, not only user that uses the client. right? So this is how you go to the Facebook, you create a client there, and you get client secret and uh, next to the client ID. So we are just doing the same steps that we did before. We create a new client. We need to be careful to choose the correct name. So the name is app minus HTML5. Then we go to installation tab, and we use the download option to get the configuration, which we then copy into Keycloak JSON file that is part of our application. And this one looks very similar to the example one. The example one used master realm. So for this demo, I chose to use demo realm. And now we can repackage again, which should succeed. And we also need to deploy it again. We can check that it was really deployed. We can see it's there. And now we can hit the URL where it's listening to see if this communication actually works. Now, we would expect that we would have to log in for certain things. Maybe not all of the things, but we would expect to be automatically redirected to a login page. And so we try invoke public, which invokes the REST service. And it's like we saw. So now, now we try to log in. We click the login button. And now we'll try to log in as test. But this doesn't work because we created a new demo realm and there are no users yet. And so we'll first create a little test user. And we'll set 
a this time permanent password for it. Okay, so now we have the user. So now we should be able to successfully log in. Okay. So we have a user, but this is still forbidden, right? Even though we are logged in, we cannot really access the secured part. And why is that? Um, we saw that here in WebXML, we actually constrained certain uh, um, endpoints based on a role. And when we created a user, we didn't create any roles. And so we need to create these exactly same, these exact same roles, like user and admin. And then once we created these roles in a realm, we can then map these roles to a user. So now we first assign the user the user role. First it didn't work, so we log out and log in again. And now we see that we succeeded with secured endpoint. Secured endpoint only allows users, um, actually, actually, yeah, secure endpoint allows users, uh, but then we have admin endpoint, which does not allow users. So we went back and we also added an admin role to the user, and this time we were even successful with admin endpoint. And also from our application, we created a link in this demo. This demo is a link to self-service app. And so this is a self-service app. Again, we are redirected to Keycloak, and here I can do anything. So I just, I can see all the sessions that I have opened. I can see uh, to which websites I approved the access to my credit. No. Okay, so this is the demo. These are some of the links that I used um, to download stuff. So Kicklock has a very nice community page. Uh, there is a bunch of documentation there. Um, you can go in securing apps guide to get information on how to secure various different containers. And uh, the quick start is available on GitHub, you can clone it and use it. And it's basically it. Any questions? It is. It is possible. Um, there is something called user. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me see. Uh, yes, Th this is one of the uh, great uses of uh, Kicklog actually to put it in front of your existing solution. And so you put your uh, users here, there is user federation. And here you have support, out of the box support for several providers. You can use Kerberos and you can use LDAP. And LDAP also has option for Kerberos. So th th there, there are you can have Kerberos integration together with LDAP even, right? This is actually the most common enterprise use uh, to have an LDAP server behind it. And then you have a very different kind of um, synchronization options. Um, it's like when an administrator changes your password in the LDAP, um, you will of course have to use it, but then you yourself can self uh, change the password, like in self-registration, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, it will actually be also changed in LDAP. Then there are listeners as well. Uh, there, are, there are various uh, options. Um, it, it, it's tunable. And uh, it's very extensible as well. So what you can do is 
uh, do a custom storage, or you can do like a, a custom storage that is only a, a filter that does something and then delegates to that storage. So you can intercept some information. You can very fine tune. With Android Native Web, okay. Um, we suggest that you always use our login forms, and that means if you want to integrate with Keycloak App, you would have to use um, something that came out, I think, a year or something ago. Um, it's it's not a Web View component, um, or it's Web View tab, or something like that. It's a, it's a browser tab which you can integrate in your application. And what you get is that um, it actually starts a process, um, an independent Chrome process in the background, as I understand. And then you get in your app just the single view from that Chrome, actually. And so it is inter-process now. You have a single sign-on with your browser as well. So even if you log in from your browser, for example, when you're, using, when you're looking at a web page, and then you switch to the native app, the native app will actually use the same session that was in the browser. So uh, we suggest that you use this approach for Android, um, but we don't actually have an example for this. Um, or. We, we are looking for feedback with any issues there. It can, and actually the next session, um, Alesh will show uh, how he actually implemented this. Uh, yes, uh, there's also a quick start for this. Um, ju just find it there among quick starts. Yeah, we, we, we support, um, I, I don't know, out, out, you know, just out of my hand, but uh, there, is, uh, there are different, there, there are other web uh, containers like Tomcat and, uh, what is it, Undertow, um, Jetty, Jetty. Um, I mean, everything that is Tomcat based is supported. So, we don't have a plugin for, I don't know, Grizzly or stuff like that. Um, and for containers that are not Java, what we have, um, you can use a proxy. And then uh, you have this automatic redirect functionality actually in another process in front of your application. Right? It's not as tightly integrated, but it can be a solution for where this native adapter is not available. OK. Uh, Keycloak requires a monolithic database for storing its data. And so if you have a, a cluster database or cluster relational database of some sort, then what you can do is you can put multiple Keycloak instances in a clustered configuration, and uh, this will work. So you can have, for typically, it's probably not so much about performance um, or to improve performance, or maybe it could be, I don't know. But um, if, if you want reliability, you definitely want at least two instances of Keycloak running, right? And so uh, you just make a cluster of two nodes, and uh, they both need to be configured with the data source to the same database, and that will work. So basically, if I want to scale the second data center, the first one, I need the database of the right. blue light as the database. Yeah, I don't really have, uh, let's say, experience with how you would have a cluster database among multiple data server, data centers. Uh, uh, does that exist? I don't know.
for this? Yes, of course, you can use Kubernetes for anything. So you can use it for this as well. And um, there is um, currently already a, a image for OpenShift, and it's available currently only on OpenShift Enterprise or uh, OpenShift Online. If you manage to get um, this next generation OpenShift Online account, um, it's available there. And that, that is all Kubernetes. Um, yeah, that's, um, I, I'm not sure I, I know how to answer it. It's, it's, we, we use the, we use, we use the same, same thing uh, used by Google Authenticator, right? So it's, it's those time-based or event-based things. Uh, yeah. Well, in principle, um, well, JBoss Modules is about class loading. JBoss Modules is only about providing a library in a way that Wildfly handles it. Uh, it it's not, I mean, it's just an implementation detail of how you, you would provide this. The proper thing is that Keycloak Server uh, in, has multiple SPIs. This is um, Service Provider Interface. So these are extensions point for your own implementations of things that we provide, but you can add your own implementation and provide your own. Either you can either replace our thing or you just provide your thing and then you configure it that for the, this specific realm, yours should be used. And um, everything in Keycloak is provided this way. And so you can f flip out anything for your implementation. And so, um, I know that uh, some time ago we had uh, YubiKeys and uh, we were talking about supporting that kind of protocol with YubiKeys. Uh, I don't know if we actually have that working. Um, there is a mailing list, uh, Keycloak user, which uh, is very good um, regularly. I mean, <laughs> we are there. Uh, the questions are answered. Uh, so if you have anything, I suggest uh, you add. Just ask, yeah. So that's it, thank you.